presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing great, man. How you been? Oh, great. I really appreciate you and Tommy. You do, you do great job, great work, and I really appreciate it. I watch you every day. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here, man. Let's go to uh, Sylvia in Tampa. Hey, Sylvia, how you doing? Hey, Tom. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. I want to tell you thank you so much for the advice you gave me on dust yesterday. I exited when you told me, and I made a, I made a healthy profit for, That's awesome. for a very short period. So thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 73, NASDAQ up 2, S&P's up 5, gold contract flat 1227. It was down to 1221, so not bad, not great, not bad. Silver, silver down 4 cents, $15.57 an ounce. Copper, copper up a penny and a half at 275 a pound. Light sweet crude up 73 cents, $68.81 a barrel. We had the uh, API numbers come out uh, uh, this morning, bottom line is that uh, you had quite a, um, basically, uh, build inside uh, crude. And so you had some a nice volatility out there. Gold's been moving, uh, oil's been moving around about a buck. Notes and bonds. We had the 10-year note down two ticks, 120.01, 30-year bond off 11, 144.22. You had Powell speaking again. Uh, bottom line, these notes and bonds want higher price. Uh, you had the 30-year pullback, 11 ticks, dramatically lighter volume saying it still wants higher price. King dollar. King dollar up 116 ticks, trading 94,820. King dollar went for the 95 again, failed once again. We're going to get our head wrapped around King dollar. It's pretty wild, folks. King dollar has been trying to take out the 95 area uh, the past uh, almost, uh, yeah, about uh, seven, yeah, seven weeks now. Uh, each and every time it gets up there, bottom line, you get a big seller. Uh, we had out here this morning. Had some good juice behind it. Housing number comes out at 8.30. Guess what? Bang, they sold it down. Well, it's going to be intriguing. Is it, the same, is it the same seller each and every time it gets up to that 95 area? You're going to see uh, King Dollar failed on price once again. Euro is at 116.46 to 1 U.S. dollar. The yen is at 112.86 to 1 U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. But you want me to take a look at that dollar right off the bat. What you're going to see is this. Uh, King dollar out here this morning gets up to a price point of 95.180. Your last swing high up here is 95.255. So the bottom line is it didn't make that swing. It got over the swing that was established out here last Thursday, which was 95 flat. Bottom line sold right off off of it. And when you take a look at intraday here, you're going to see the type of selling that uh, what happens when we get up to that 95. It's pretty wild. Uh, so your first sell down was at 8:30 in the morning. Um, we did 27,000 contracts. That sell down was 14,000 contracts. That's when King Dollar gave up the 95 number. It was 9508. Gets down to uh, 94,985. Bottom line is that we also get volume right now down at the low of today, which is 94,720. So uh, it looks like once again, King Dollar is not going to make this 95 area. We'll see what it does for the metal market. Some of the, um, let's go to the note market. We take a look at the note market. What we have with notes out here. Note market today, the 10-year note flat. Uh, we've done 735,000 contracts. High was 120.08. We're at 120.01. And this is an anemic volume once again. It's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, you're talking uh, 735,000 contracts. You're, you're going, going into 1.5 million. 30-year, uh, same type of setup inside the 30-year. What we have with the 30-year, 30 30-year 30 out here is down 11 ticks. Um, 
you are you've done 166,000 contracts. That baby, I believe, is going into 300 and something. Two, 243. So you get a, a 166 going into 243. Let's go take a look at this intraday and see where that sit come. Okay, so intraday, it started out at, uh, well, right from the morning, right from 850. Uh, 850, it's been coming down. Bottom line is that we had the low of uh, two days ago was the 144.23. We're at 144.22 right now. Some of the higher volume equities out here inside this market. You have Bank of America up 12 cents. Uh, Twitter's down $1.29. You get Netflix off uh, 3.40. You get uh, CSX. That's the railroad company that came out with numbers last night. That's up $4.10. United came out with numbers last night. That's up $6.31. You get Apple pulling back a buck. If we go over, let's go take a look at the uh, Google. Uh, Google uh, bottom line got fined uh, five billion dollars today. They're going to appeal it. Guess what? Doesn't bother the stock. Uh, Google out here trading at a price point of uh, eleven ninety nine. Now, what's going to be interesting about Google right now is this: as the high of yesterday was twelve oh three oh four. We now that is a lost and golfing inside candlestick charting. And what lost and golfing folks is is this. First off, it has to come after an uptrend or a full downtrend. In this case, we're talking about an uptrend, an uptrend that started out March 28th. If a huge uptrend, then at the top of that trend, what you end up doing is that you end up opening lower, closing higher. Bottom line, we did that. Now what you have, is, which is really intriguing, is this. You got that level yesterday. Volume wasn't bad. Volume was out here at 1.6 million. Now, what you've done today is that you've got over that level. We went to 12.04.50. 12.03 is the number, and it's given it up, and you're going to have lighter volume. So that, if that's where we close out here, that also is signaling that good old Google wants to pull back. They shake off, no doubt, the $5 billion fine. That's peanuts for Google. Uh, but what, you, what we are having, uh, today's the 18th. They're going to be coming out with their numbers on the 23rd. If we go over to the gold contract, we take a look at gold. What you have with gold is this. Since April 14th, it was slamming gold. Bottom line is that what we have out here today, uh, April since April 11th. April 11th, we were at uh, 1375. Today, hit 1220. Um, rejected lower price. We'll see uh, if we get any juice and any follow through. What we have had is this, is that you get two serious down days with juice. I uh, actually get three if we bring this all the way back. First, you get the break on the 15th of June, 15th of June, uh, we go from a price point of 1306 to 1277. We drift lower. We get another bottom made out at 1238. We break that yesterday with uh, 318,000 uh, versus 298. Uh, bottom line is that uh, versus the big number of 526. So right now you're at 1227. If, in fact, we get follow through, you can see this going up to 1277. That's the way that's set up. Stay right there, folks, and we come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-663. If the dial up 73, NASDAQ is up 2, SMPs are up 5. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at uh, a couple gold stocks here. So we got McEwen Mining first. Uh, we pull up uh, McEwen Mining. We've had our man, Mr. Rob McEwen, uh, on about a month ago. So this little baby here, if you take a look, if you happen to be watching Tiger TV, what you're going to see uh, right now, you're at a shot position of 18.67%. Now, this was at 1967 uh, this was the first week that that shot position actually went down. What's intriguing here is that now what you have, you know, bottom line is gold gets smoked. Uh, this equity has just gone in two weeks from $2 to $2.34. Uh, and so check it out. You get a small ABC up. We just took out the uh, 228 uh, and we get some juice behind it. Now, it's not a monster one. It's 25 cents, but that gets you kind of uh, where we are right now. That being said, what I expect you're going to see is that what this thing wants to run up to the 240 area. Now, the real intriguing part here is going to be this, is that when Rob was on, the market in general was figuring that in order to get this new mine open, that he would basically do a secondary. A secondary it means you push more shares out in the marketplace, and that's how you're going to finance the deal. Uh, in this particular case, um, McEwen Mining has $337 million in the marketplace thus far. Bottom line, he didn't do that. What he did is that he did a bond offering that he actually took half of it himself. This is going to get really intriguing. The reason being is that we know that the metals market itself has been weak. You know, the equities haven't been as weak as the actual metal, but bottom line, it's weak. I think they get this thing going, and it's going to be really intriguing because all it's going to take uh, is the aspect that people think that, okay, we have an 18.5% shot interest. Um, bottom line, you get that baby going, uh, hold on for the ride. Uh, it's going to be really intriguing. Now, um, we haven't talked about John Paulson for a long period of time. Uh, now, John Paulson came into the gold market in a big way, 2008. You know, um, it hasn't uh, worked out for him because uh, what, it, what it did have is that we've had two great runs in that time, but bottom line, he didn't sell anything. That being said, uh, Detour Gold. Now, if you remember, Detour Gold, uh, bottom line is that uh, this is a uh, gold company that uh, does business up in Canada. Um, the CEO here, I, I didn't, well, actually, this is an interim CEO. This is the guy I had on. But um, Detour Gold was an advertiser for a long period of time. Um, I had the 
um, CEO, and many times I talked to him in the booth. Uh, well, Paulson's a large owner of this, and the reason that you're seeing this up 13% today is that they get a battle going on, and, and what it is is that Paulson basically went into them about a month and a half ago uh, saying, hey, listen, man, uh, you got to get this thing going. You're not doing the right job. Uh, they are a, a producer, okay? When you take a look at it uh, right now, I think it's about 600, 700 million. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing 770 million, um, all gold and gold exploration. Um, now, what you have here, which is going to be really interesting, what, what Paulson is saying uh, is that he first came into them, and then the second part of this, and this is what's really intriguing. Here, let me run you through this, okay? Uh, Paulson is requesting that the Detours Board immediately share the information with all shareholders in the public and announce a formal process to evaluate strategic opportunities. What happened here is this. The Detour bo Board went back to Paulson and told him that they do have a large gold company that is interested in looking to purchase them. So what, it, what Paulson did, ASAP, which is really smart of him, uh, is that the board didn't go out to the public and tell the public this. So Paulson came right out and said, hey, listen, he wants the public to know as much as he knows because this was an unsolicited deal on Paulson's part. This is what, this is what he's rapping. That's, that's what he's saying. That's the bottom line. So the intriguing part, of course, is that uh, you, you get this baby going topside, and what does happen um, inside this business, um, these companies need more ore. Need more rock, no doubt. Let's go to our man Tim in Denver, Colorado. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tommy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? It's been a while. I know, I know. <laughs> How's life? Good. Good. Awesome, man. Yeah, weather's nice out here. Oh, I, I bet the, the weather's amazing out there, right? Especially, you know, it's interesting is that the there's a lot of folks where we live um in florida that do go out there for the summer you know yeah in, in, in the fall. fire in the mountain so yeah and hey how is how is the beetles you know the last the time I mean, yeah uh we haven't heard too much this last few years but the damage has been done from before so yeah. okay that's great though because that that yeah. was sad looking at that that those trees that if you've never seen a beetle kill for folks, it's like really strange, man. You, you got a beautiful yeah, forest, yeah. and then all of a sudden nothing. Yeah, right, man. It's hard to comprehend that any kind yeah. of bug can eat that much stuff, right? Or yeah. kill that much mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I was going to ask you about the CGC. It's a C it's a marijuana drug com uh, company. Let's take a look at it. You guys in, in Colorado are going to know, oh, canopy. Yeah, I like canopy. <laughs> well, you yeah. were looking at wheat from Toronto, so I thought maybe you can look at that to see. If no, this is, this, is even, this is good. This is great. So uh, CGC is canopy growth, folks. Uh, this is trading right now on the NYSE. That's how yeah. they, they got in the NYSE. Uh, the low is $6.35. The high is 36 now, this company here, folks, if you're going to, you know, basically get in the weed business, it's something you want to keep your eye on. Um, the reason being is that when you take a look at this, what you're going to see is that the booze companies basically have already got into it. You have Constellation, mm -hmm. Constellation Brands, which is um, Corona, you know, big, big operator. They're already yeah. in it. Um, what we also have now, Molson's doesn't own any of this yet. Uh, but what you do have is that Molson came out with a press release saying that they want in this business. And it was actually, it was more than a press release, folks. It was a filing with the SEC. And inside that filing, they had two different things, that they thought that the weed companies were going to come into their business, meaning hurt the alcohol business. And they were basically giving notice that they planned on getting into the weed business. And the way they did it, the way they plan on doing it, which is going to be wild, is that they plan on infusing beer. That was the filing inside the SEC. Oh, wow. So, Most yeah, I know. It's, it's, mm. it, it totally makes sense, too. That's the bottom line. But um, lately he's been correcting a little bit. I was kind of looking for an entry point, you know, as to... Look at this. This is... You know, I wanted to get this low. I don't own this yet, and I haven't, because I was looking to get this at that... April uh, 10th deal, but this is rejected. Well, I, heard you, of, I heard you talking about trying to get into weed at a, you know, yeah. a buck up 
what, four weeks ago, so I thought yes. I'll, I'll just add this one to your list. Of, no, no, I, I, I'll stop pulling this one up because this makes more sense, for, especially for all the investors in the U.S. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a good-looking stock, man. I mean, I you know. looking like 22 or 24, you know, is the entry. Yeah, tw 22 is the number. Because if I bring up weed, watch, 20, you know, that being said, now watch what this is doing today. This is, let me put this on a weekly. Twenty-five. Yeah, see what happened out here today. It's February 9th high. Hold it up. Here, stay right there, okay? We're coming okay, right back. Okay, sure. Yep. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the dial up 76. NASDAQ's up two. S&P's up five and a half. We're coming right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we have the Dow Industrials up 77, NASDAQ's up two, SPs are up five and a half. We're talking with our man Tim from Denver, Colorado. We are talking uh, canopy growth. And now, what's going to be intriguing here um, is this, Tim. So check this out. When I was just looking at this, so that's that's trading at twenty six dollars ninety cents right now, and that the, the the correlation. So this is trading on NYSE, folks. Okay, yep. Canopy mm -hmm. Growth started in uh, Canada. Bottom line, uh, Smith Falls. They uh, trade up in Canada. So when I was bringing up the symbols weed, that 
April 10th date is the same number that I was looking at Canadian versus uh, uh, U.S. Um, okay. I would wait for that number. Now, what's really intriguing is this. Now, watch this, folks. How you, you definitely, at certain points, patience is a, is a hard thing. Um, <coughs> you know, this baby here, when it had come down to that April 10th number, right, I really mm -hmm. wanted it at that there's a high volume low February 5th at 22 to 16, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I look at this in one aspect, it's like, okay, it rejected lower price out here today. That thing can fly. Now watch this. This is what just happened up in Canada, and this is gonna be a big deal, folks, okay? So one of the reasons that the Canadian stocks are basically not only moving, but they're, they're really doing numbers. Now watch this here. When I put up the revenue, you're gonna see that canopy growth planned on going from 22 million a quarter, that's what they did last quarter. Um, next couple quarters, they plan on doing 25 million, and then they plan to accelerate to 75 million, then 100 million. Wow. Now, that acceleration, folks, it's pot is gonna be totally legal recreationally October 17th in Canada. That's gonna be the mm -hmm. first, first world country that is the Illegal. whole country, yeah. The whole country. That being yep. said, watch what just happened yesterday. Now, this is this is important because this is a big profit segment of it. Yesterday, what happened is that the let's see the the government uh, turned around and said that okay, we uh, are not going to allow edibles, beverages. Uh, are vaping for an additional year because they want to see what the aspect of the quality control would be, the dosage would be, the portion sizes would be, and the packaging would be, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you are from Denver, so you've already seen how this is laid out. Yeah. What happens, folks, in, in Denver, any place that this is legal, this is a very big part of the business. In fact, in Florida, the medical marijuana is legal, mm -hmm. but yet they don't have the flowers. And they have, they have some very high-end THC, yeah. and, it's, and, and they have the vaping, and that's pure THC also, right? Mm -hmm. So what's, what's unique about this is that this is going to basically hit those numbers because my understanding is that when you look at let's say Denver in general, there's plenty of people that they want nothing to do with smoking whatsoever, and they would much rather a small edible or basically an infused beverage than actually smoking um, you know, a flower. So we'll see where that is. If There's a couple quotes here, so let's see. The government has said it wants more time to address the unique risk around that slice of the market, including quality control, dosage, portion size, and packaging. Until, until then, a vital part of the market will remain on hold, which could undermine the government's stated goal of legalization. The reason being is that once you have the aspect of the flowers in general that are legal, already up there, they have plenty of illegal uh, candies that you actually just buy online. That's what this yeah. is. So watch, watch, the, watch this is saying right here. Products from THC-infused lollipops to cookies and truffles are already available online in Canada and throughout dispensaries that are not sanctioned by the government. Uh, so this is a quote by the CEO of Canopy. You either mm -hmm. switch to what we provide or you stick with the illicit market, said Bruce Linton, chief executive officer of Canopy Growth, Canada's largest marijuana producer, said in a telephone interview. So I would wait, uh, you know, for that pullback because this is going to change those numbers. There's, there's no doubt. This is yeah. a this is this is a uh, business, yeah. it, and this is a curveball. You know, mm. this is definitely a curveball. You know what the thing is amazing, folks. Okay, this is what blows my mind, is that these governments just even I don't know in general about Canada, but I can tell you in the state of Florida, it blows my mind that the governments themselves don't know a lot about how. THC in general basically you gets used because because of the fact is this in Florida what has happened is that you can't 
have flowers, okay? So that's the buds. Now, okay. that's going to change also because uh, two people just brought the state to court, and they both won because that wasn't how it was supposed to be shaked out. The thing that's amazing to me, though, is this, is that when this first went through, I always thought that it was supposed to be a low THC content. There's no, yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe in Florida that they, they have a, they have a, they have a high content and, it, and it's a syringe. That's what they call it. It's a syringe and it's like crazy. It's like, you know, <laughs> you, you wouldn't take it. I mean, that, that's, that's how powerful it is. Is that, I mean, it's like crazy. It's like, oh, you're not, you're not going to give someone a, a bud, but yet you're going to give them a high concentrate. It's a 90% THC. It's like, oh my God. Like, so, you know, I guess. No, in Colorado. You can buy them in droplets and uh, capsules and things like that for recreation, yeah. Yes. And, like and the candy, lollipops, and things like right. that. Right. And my understanding is that that's what people want. And the, the sad part up in Canada, actually, is what Linton is saying is that when it's legal, folks, is that what happens is that you know the amount of dosage you take, it meaning you can get very, very small dosage, which make a huge difference. Because if you're, if you're going to, you know, you better make sure you know what you're taking. That's the bottom line. So, so I hey, thought listen. I asked because you talked about wheat uh, several weeks ago. So maybe on your market insight, maybe you can, when you look at the buy point, maybe you can in, enter that. No, I will. I'm, listen, I'm all over them. I, <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to be a very, very large, I, it's, it's going to be a very large business, period. Business, yeah. Listen, the think about it is that how many people you know the booze business is a monster the booze companies are going to get into this business and we all have vices you know mm. and my take my take on it that you know you're 10 times better off basically getting you know taking a smoking a joint versus then drinking a whiskey or whatever else it is i mean it's just i just think it's it's a different it's a different deal do you know what I mean? It does. Yeah, they're all yeah. they're all vices. I mean, it'd be great if none of us had any vices. That'd be that'd be fabulous. <laughs> um, yeah, it, but it, the, it's be yeah. I mean, here the cops have a tough time trying to <laughs> distinguish whether it's from alcohol or from over the. From, yeah, from, I don't know. listen. I don't know how they're going to do that. I mean, I, I, know, I think yeah. one of one of the largest problems we have, never mind, it, is you know, is pharmaceutical heavy drugs. When I think yeah. about you know what has happened in the last twenty years. You know, it used to be a big, when we were kids, I, I've only had one operation. And I think they gave me, you know, appendix. They gave me three yeah. Percocets. I could take one every day. Now they I've turn talked, around. I've talked to some people with issues, with health issues, and they're benefiting from the... the oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's true. It, they, they benefit, no doubt. Okay. Cooking, Good brother. to talk to you. Have a great one, man. Thanks for yeah, calling. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Tommy. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Aerobics Cube offers more than 100 million starting positions, resulting in 43 billion potential twists and turns. Yet this puzzle can be solved in 20 moves. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and knowing the right move makes all the difference in the world. And on Thursday, July 19th at 4.15 p.m., I'll share with you the three essential tools behind my number one ranking by Timer Digest for the S&P 500. This 30-minute event is being hosted by Ninja Trader, and it's open to everyone in our listening audience. At this event, I'll share with you the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that subscribers not 
I use to identify tops and bottoms, as well as Stevie's red line and the market profiles that I use. The sign-up link is on the homepage of TFNN.com and requires nothing more than your name and email address. To help celebrate my number one market timing ranking, we're making Mastering Probability available to anyone in our listening audience for the next 30 days with a free money-back guarantee, whether you've subscribed in the past or not. Make your move now by coming to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up for Thursday's workshop, as well as my free newsletter trial offer. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the path of least resistance under trading newsletters. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go over to Amazon. So Amazon, um, you know, basically had its uh, Amazon Prime, Prime Day, folks. Monster number. Amazon's hanging right at its highs, 1843. Well, when you take a look at uh, the, uh, let's go, I want to go into this because this is pretty cool. Um, here we go. Wrong one. Let me get this because what this is about, the story is about, uh, oh, where are you? It's great to be a box maker uh, in the day and age of uh, Amazon. Here we go. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, so boxes in general, folks, okay, corrugated cardboard, um, it's, it's something that we've, we have looked at for years. I haven't looked at it, you know, basically a couple of years right now. But what does happen is this. And when you're accelerating up or basically getting toasted on the way down, that cardboard market, the container board market, uh, can tell you quite a bit. Uh, so let's see what they're saying right now. The June corrugated packaging data continues to reflect the solid fundamentals of the U.S. industry. Mills right now, so check this out. This is pretty amazing. Mills that are making container board are running at 97% of capacity. Um, shipments are up 3%. Inventories um, are only a 3.7 week supply. Could you imagine you're in a business, a manufacturing business, and you only have 3.7 weeks of supply? Pretty cool. Uh, box shipments in June, on average, increased 3% versus the prior year. Um, the capacity is running at 96.8%. Um, now, what's intriguing here, um, that, has, that has been running at that rate, by the way, for five years. It's pretty amazing. It, it actually just went up. It, it was running at 96.3%. Now it's 96.8, so an up five-tenths of 1%. Three of the major container board uh, operated uh, at very tight levels. Listen to this one. This is pretty amazing. So recycled liner board is running at 99.4%. That is amazing. The companies that, uh, if you're going to be looking at some companies, these are the companies. International Paper, West Rock, Georgia Pacific, uh, Pratt Paper, Cascade, uh, Grief. Those are the largest uh, producers uh, in the U.S., Okay, so now let's find out what it costs. Okay, so North American uh, packaging producers are focusing on passing $50 a ton increase through the box prices. Okay, let's see what this means. This is oh, this is this is quite a this is quite a rise. They they're going to try to push this up 
uh, by 8 to 10 percent for boxes and 10 to 12 percent for the sheet. So a sheet must be a side of a box. While the container hike was realized with relative ease, uh, the in initiative may be more difficult provided the lack of co cost justification due to the um, plunge and recycled fiber costs. So check this out. This is what is going on inside the recycled aspect of the board itself. And it, now this isn't in, in the story. I happen to know this because there was a, a story in the Tampa Bay Times a few weeks ago about recycling in general. And what had happened is this, is that when we recycle goods, including cardboard, right, China has been the largest buyer of that. And what has happened, China has pulled back dramatically. So this part of the story, what it's saying is that, hey, listen, your, your recycled part of this has gone down. And of course, the users of boxes are probably saying, how are you going up when we know that the recycling part of that has gone down? Because um, actually along 275, between me going from St. Petersburg to uh, Clearwater, that's where one of the big recycling plants are. And what happens, which is really wild, is that there's certain days that you can actually see, you can see the cardboard because it's so overflowed. And of course, that isn't how it's supposed to work. What's supposed to work is everything that's coming in that night is supposed to get you know, put back together, put in those big machines, pressed, and basically taken to the port of Tampa and getting out of there. Um, so this is going to be wild uh, watching this whole shake out. The, the public companies themselves, they are expecting to post earnings this year uh, of an accelerated rate from 10 to 28%. Pretty wild, man. And you can imagine just Google in general, I mean, uh, Amazon in general, what they are pressing out. It's just, it must be just phenomenal. And, you know, guess what? That's not going to stop. That absolutely is not going to stop, you know. So we'll see how the rest of that uh, does shake out. Let's go over and take a look at Netflix. So Netflix, folks, made a nice run back yesterday. Um, that being said, you know, guess what? You, you know, your high in Netflix is 423. You're 374. You have a high volume load out there, laying out there at, at 344. And bottom line, you know, we uh, right now we'll see whether it can save itself at the 50 uh, day moving average. You know, yesterday you broke that with a vengeance. Uh, today we're testing it again. And if you put this on a weekly, as I said yesterday, my take on this is that. They're going to have some big problems now. The reason being is that what yesterday did chart-wise, it did some heavy damage. Uh, the heavy damage being that the acceleration up in Netflix, we went from $185 with a straight line move. That's January of 2017. And what we did yesterday is that we broke that with the vengeance. You know, you came down hard, had wide price spread, had big volume. And now what we're doing is that we're testing the other side of that. And that's a typical Bud Rolfs break of a trend line. You go back up to the trend line again. To come back up with lighter volume, get out of the way because then you are coming into lower prices. And what, we, what Netflix did do, um, they listen, they're growing, they're still growing exponentially. Yet this was the first quarter in six quarters that they did not grow as much as they did the last five quarters. So that is a heads up in itself, because if you get a reversal of the growth, Netflix, it's so inexpensive. They need new subscribers in order to keep the cash flow going to pay for everything going forward. You know, I think it's a great company. Um, bottom line is that uh, when you look at the price structure, however, um, this has a P.E. of uh, 164. And you are growing at, let's see. So you're growing at, well, internationally 57. Even if I take the, if I take the largest growth number, if you take 57 away from 100 and, uh, what I say, 164, you're still dealing with a 90 PE. Yeah, you're still dealing with the 90 PE. Bottom line is that, you know, you're paying $90 for $1 of earnings, you know, and you got to figure out, is that, where I want to be. Oil, what oil did out here today, uh, let's go take a look at that oil market because we had the oil numbers come out this morning. 
You had some nice volatility inside that market. Crude oil right now is up 1%. Uh, we had a high of 68.96. We had a low of 67.04. Um, light volume, this is just a counter trend bounce. Looks to me like oil can get up to $70. You're at 68.88. Um, that's about all it looks like she wrote. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow up 84, NASDAQ up 3, S&P's up 6.5. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com. Dot com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And, folks, if we go back over to Detour Gold for a second. So, Detour Gold, bottom line, uh, Paulson is saying that they uh, got a buyout offer. Uh, the, the company had, had told Paulson this. Bottom line, Paulson went right out. This was unsolicited, that Paulson said. So, he went out. Right, right out today with a letter. Um, so the whole world can simultaneously know what he knows immediately. Now, the intriguing part about this and what we're going to get out of the inside the gold market is this, is that what is a company worth, meaning in an environment that would have been coming down on gold? Uh, you get, um, which we're trading up $1.50 right now. You're at $13.75. But it's going to be an important uh, deal uh, if, in fact, number one, uh, it's a fact that a company did come over and say they're going to buy it out. Um, because what it does is does pricing structure wise as to what a producer is actually worth right now. Right now, the PE on Detour is uh, 22, and you know, bottom line revenue. Uh, they five years ago they did 535 million. They're doing 795 million. 
Um, it's going to be intriguing, though, watching this th thing shake out because I believe this came out intraday. Yeah, it came out intraday. It only ca it came out at uh, it came out at one o'clock today. So we're going to get a lot more information about this because now you can have the dog fight between Paulson and the board. That's the first part. The second part's a larger part as to was there and is there a number? And the press release is saying it's a large company. Bottom line, we'll see uh, if, in fact, we get that information. That information will um, either basically, you know, put these gold companies a lot higher or put them lower, you know, because it will contingent fundamentally on what they're producing and what another gold company feels they will buy uh, that production for. Because we haven't had um, any type of buyouts in the metal market in a long period of time. Because, of course, we'd, we've had, you've had basically gold going south. Um, so that, in the next few days, I expect we're going to, I, I expect what we're actually going to see, because once in the dog fight like this, um, the SEC is going to be all over Detour saying, why didn't you tell the rest of the shareholders instead of just telling Paulson that, in fact, they have an offer on the table? Big, it's a big number. Stay right there, folks. We're going to come back with some numbers. We have the Dow Industrials up 83, NASDAQ up 2, S&P's up 6. Come right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Oh, oh it's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taking it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday, Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. Yeah. But holy commo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 79. The Nasdaq flat. S&P's up 5. Gold contract flat. 12.27.60 an ounce. Silver down four cents, trading $15.57 an ounce. Copper, copper up a penny, 2.75 a pound. Light Street crude come out with the uh, numbers this morning. We had a build inside the numbers. Bottom line, oil up 83 cents, $68.90 now. The oil market, folks, last week we're at 74. Oil numbers come out. Bottom line, you also had a build, uh, you had a drawdown last week. Market popped for all of about 10 minutes, then went south from $74 down to the 68. Right now, you're at 68.90. I expect you're going to get a pop to somewhere about 70. Bottom line, though, oil wants lower price. Notes and bonds. We had Powell speaking yesterday uh, at the Senate Banking Committee. We had him speaking today. Bottom line, he's saying that, hey, listen, the economy's going good. Uh, I thought short-term rates were still going to go up. 
Right now, if we do take a look at the Fed fund futures rate, what you're going to see is that you are, we're at a 90 percent um, probability. Oh, this is, yeah, 90 percent probability. That didn't change. That uh, short term rates would go up an additional 25 basis points on September 26th. Now, it's going to get interesting here uh, is that the you had a lot of questions asked about the flattening of the yield curve. And right now, what you have is that our 10 year yield is at 2.875. And what you can see uh, on the next rise inside the short term rates, that would be saying that the short term rate would go from 2 to 2.5. That is going to be kind of dangerous. That's why those um, questions are being asked right now. Because what you have there, of course, on a short term rate, um, that is bank to bank lending overnight. Uh, when we take a look at this, when you take a look at the differential between the two and the 10, this is where this is getting dicey. We're 2.875 on the 10. We're 2.611 on the two. That's, that is flattening down in a big way. Uh, so we'll see if that 90% number changes uh, before we uh, get into that September meeting. What the note and bond market is saying, meaning the public market, is that they're still buying notes, they're still buying bonds, and that market is saying that, guess what? I'm real happy with the rates where they are. They want, notes want higher price. Bonds want higher price. That equals lower yield. King dollar. King dollar up 141 ticks, trading 94.845. King dollar, once again, went into the 95 mark. It's been trying to, this is the dollar index. It's been trying to get over that mark for six and a half weeks. Each and every time it comes up to the 95 mark, you have large seller that pushes it right off that mark. Same deal happened out here today, 8.30 this morning. Now the housing numbers come out. Well, the, the housing numbers that came out this morning was the amount of new permits that were basically pulled. That was down 9%. Uh, in nine month low, big numbers. People aren't pulling new permits, they gotta get rid of what's out there first. Bottom line, that number come out, bang. Housing number comes out, the seller's right back inside King Dollar. This failed on price, once again at the 95 area, you're at 94,845. Euro's at 116.31 to one US dollar, yen is out here trading at 112.87 to one US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Let's go over and take a look at uh, IBM. IBM just came out with numbers. Uh, so IBM uh, today closed at a price point of 144.52. IBM is trading at 145.75. That's not going to do a thing for IBM because IBM is down from 170 just six months ago. So let's see what they're saying number-wise out here. The estimate, revenue estimate, was 19.9 billion. They came in with 20 billion. Uh, see, I, IBM folks, you know what's amazing here? They have been massaging their numbers for so long, it's, it's just amazing. And the market doesn't believe them. That's the real bottom line. Uh, we'll see what the rest of these numbers have to say. Um, the earnings per share, the estimate was $3.04. They made $3.08. Um, they did reaffirm their a full uh, 20. 18 uh, forecast. So let's see what they're saying on the 2018 forecast. Um, okay, so they're saying that the that their pre-tax income is going to be up 14 percent. Operating income is going to be up 11 uh, percent. They see pre-tax margins expanding 1 percent uh, year over year. Uh, revenue at 20 billion. Uh, that's adjusted uh, for currency. Cloud revenue is $18.5 billion over the last 12 months. That is growing. That's up 23%. Um, at service annual exit run rate revenue was up 20. Yeah, it was up 26%. Okay, so uh, with uh, Ginny. The CEO is saying, Romani, Jenny Romani, we delivered strong revenue and growth profit in the quarter. Uh, IBM's uh, progress and momentum in the emerging high value segments of the IT industry. More clients are engaged in IBM on their journey uh, to the cloud and deploying IBM Cloud, Watson AI, analytics, blockchain, and security solutions. Um, that's what they're saying, but guess what, folks? 
Um, so, uh, okay, let's see. Strategic uh, revenue over the past 12 months was 39 billion, up 15 percent. Total clown revenue uh, last 12 months was 18.5 billion. So if we go take a look at this chart-wise, what you're going to see is this high that was generated out here. February of uh, 2017 was $182, and we bring this back a little bit more. You're going to see that your high, I believe this high, I guess it's seven years ago now. Yeah, here it is up here. Man, time flies. Five years ago. So your high was 2013, $215. Um, you go downtown to $116. You do a counter trend bounce up to uh, 182 Bottom line, IBM just doesn't have it. You know, in fact, IBM has this high volume low that's laying out here at 116. And if we do take a look at their revenue model for a second, yeah, you still, well, let's put this way. It looks like they may stabilize. Uh, it's going to be close, though. You know, they expected uh, to do basically 20 billion. That's what they did. Uh, but they're pushing, they're saying that next year they're only going to do 19 billion a quarter. Pretty amazing. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Uh, Airbnb, folks, they're going to have uh, themselves set up a, a nice battle in New York. So uh, what happened in New York out here today, uh, Airbnb 
will need to share the names and addresses of hosts in New York City with officials thanks to the new law. The latest setback um, for the home rental business in one of the largest tourism destinations. The law, which uh, passed uh, today, is designed to uh, enforce existing rules banning short-term rentals. Uh, Mayor DeBalzio said that he supports the bill earlier in the day. Uh, an Airbnb host, backed financially by the company, filed a lawsuit against New York City, accusing officials of retaliating against him for speaking out in support of home rentals. Uh, Chris Lehan, a head of global policy at Airbnb, said the policy will subject innocent hosts to over-policing and violates their privacy. Lee Lehan, uh, which is a former advisor to President Clinton, lashed out at the council in a, in a conference call with reporters and accused the bill's supporters of putting the interest of hotel owners and unions above regular New Yorkers. This is a bill that really is designed to benefit the hotel industry. I'm sure that's what it is. Uh, the debate over Airbnb's role in New York has raged for years with housing advocates saying short-term rentals contribute to rising rents and gentrification, while the company argues that its homeowners um, afford their, it can help, helps their homeowners afford uh, mortgages. Regulations hasn't stopped the rise of the San Francisco-based company, which is valued at $31 billion. Um, the council, one of the councilwomen said this is about preserving as much affordable housing and housing stock as possible. Uh, before she was a politician, she had worked at the house, as a housing advocate and helped tenants who had been pushed out of their apartments by rising rents. Um, another council member, Corey Johnson, uh, who has been critical of uh, Airbnb for years, uh, framing it as a way for property managers to escape taxes and safety regulations. Uh, despite Lehan's protest, Airbnb played down the effect of the New York law would have on its business. Most of our revenue is really coming from much, much larger groups. Uh, much marginalized group in the city. This is not going to have an impact on us from broader business perspective. It will have a huge impact, folks. There's no doubt about that. We, and in New York City, the um, Airbnb business is a monster. Uh, it happens to also be a monster in Florida. Uh, we happen to be in the Airbnb business now. The the part what's intriguing. I can give if I if I give you an, an idea of just the so picture this. We're in Pinellas County. Pinellas County is the most dense county in all of Florida. There's no more land. And then even compared to Miami, Boca Raton, all that. We have the best beaches in the world. Um, it is a finger in the water. That's what it is. So to give you an idea of what has happened here, there's, there's certain beach communities that were set up specifically that people years ago, could come down, buy a condo, rent the condo out, to give you an idea, Indian Shores. So you can go, you, you go Indian Rocks, Indian Shores, Bel Air, Bel Air Beach, Treasure Island, um, St. Pete Beach, all, all of the above. Well, one of the communities has a law in place that you actually can rent your place day by day. Pretty bizarre, but that's what they have. Many of the others have them week by week. So if I can give you a, an idea of the last five years, what has happened is this, is that picture that you are coming into Florida, you're going down the beach. All the hotels are going to be two, three, four hundred dollars a day in season, right? Bottom line, the business has exploded down here in a huge way. Now, you have the yin and the yang about it. There's no doubt about it. If you think you're, you basically just bought a nice house in a nice little beach community, and then all of a sudden, right next to you, you have Airbnb that's going in all the time. You can see that it can drive people right up a wall. What has also happened, and this is where this gets bottom line problematic, is that let's say you get some really nice houses that someone's just renting on a long-term basis. What ends up happening, there are businesses that are established, they rent that house, and then they in turn rent that house out, turning basically kind of neighborhoods and to transients. So I can I get the, the gist of it. My point here in the New York City deal, New York, it's huge. It'll definitely affect their business. It'll affect their business very quickly because Airbnb is the hotel business. It's the short-term hotel business at less expensive rates. You're probably getting a better deal because of the fact that there's plenty of hosts that absolutely take care of their properties and they take care of the clients. The positive side of it 
they, but they hit this positive and negative. The positive side of it, there's plenty of people that are using this to pay their mortgage, that they'll stay in their house, they get older, nice way, nice way to basically, you know, get your social security check, check, rent out a couple rooms, whatever that is. So that's the positive part of it. The negative part of it is there's no doubt that it drives the prices up. It does change the neighborhoods. Airbnb is going to have to fucking figure figure that out. That's that's what it really comes down to. Um, we don't have, I think, because Florida has always been a tourist oriented um, deal. We have this uh, a tax. It's a fourteen percent tax. Many of the Airbnbs right down here, you register, and if you register as an Airbnb, let's guess, guess what? It, you pay fourteen percent tax. You collect it. It's no big deal. Um, this will this will affect them uh, in New York City. There's no doubt about it because if you pull up on Airbnb uh, in New York City, the deals are extraordinary. There's there's no doubt about it. And what ends up happening is that in New York downtown, you know, you get you get a closet for what a couple hundred bucks a night. There's plenty of places. So we'll see uh, how that shakes out. But uh, that's going to be a big battle. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Um, IBM just come out with the numbers. It, does, it looks like uh, IBM is just laying flat out here. They they closed at uh, 144.52. Uh, they're trading up a buck and a half. So, buck and a half. Let's go over and we take a look at the XAU, the HUI. So, what we had out here inside the um, metals market once again, uh, bottom line, equities did perform. They... Uh, you know, XAU hasn't broken a swing point yet. Bottom line, right next to it, your swing point is $79.31. We came down to 80 today, I rejected it. And if we put this up, I can see this volume of yesterday. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So what you did have yesterday is this. You had an expansion of volume. You didn't get to the swing. The expansion of volume yesterday was 29 million versus 17 versus your swing point of 24. Um, today, bottom line, didn't get to that low. That's that's a decent indication uh, that we might have a shot to go higher. The gold bugs index, and this happened about two weeks ago, the gold bugs index finally got stronger than the XAU. So picture the XAU, equities in the XAU can sell forward as many years as they want. The equities inside the sell forward their production, their gold. Um, inside the the gold bugs index, the you can only sell one and a half years of production going forward. So what happens is that the gold bugs index gives you a better indication of the probability of where the physical price of gold is going, and that swing point is down at 169. Never. Didn't, we got to 172 and I rejected it. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. 
Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over and take a look at American Express. American Express also just came out with numbers. Uh, American Express closed out here today at $102.98. That uh, is trading right now at $128. Uh, and if we do take a look at this, uh, what you're going to see we pull this back a bit. Um, this is the highs that it's been trying to take out uh, since uh, January of this year. You know, we got, we got up to a price point of 103 today, got over the 102. Uh, bottom line is that it uh, doesn't have the juice up here. Now what's going to be game once again is $87. So let's see what they have to say inside those numbers that they're pushing it down. It doesn't, they don't push it down a lot, but three points is enough at the high. You try to take out the high. Been trying to take it out for six and a half months. Can't handle it. Pulls back. This is what we have. Um, the estimate was $1.83 earnings. They come out with $1.84. Um, the revenue, yeah, this is where it's going to be a little problem, child. Let's pull it this way. Okay, so revenue, oh, that's, that's dangerous for them. Uh, revenue... Estimate was 10.1 billion. They came in with 10 billion, and you got to remember something. When you're you're managing, they're, they're managing, all these companies are managing these numbers. Uh, bottom line, uh, it's hard to manage the gross number. That's that's the difference. You want to keep your eye on that gross number because it's hard to manage it. Um, the second quarter revenue uh, was 10 billion shot than analyst estimate. They did boost their full year forecast revenue growth. Um, to 9% from a prior 8%. Their expenses uh, rose 7% year over year to $7.1 billion, primarily to higher reward spending costs tied to marketing and business development. Their provision for losses were $806 million. Uh, Morgan Stanley had estimate, estimated they would put eight twenty one. dollars So the reason this one's important is this. Companies in general can estimate their, their loss provisions in the banking industry or any, any industry, excuse me. There's not one firm number. The market is looking at that saying that, okay, Morgan Stanley said maybe you should put 821 aside for bad debt. They put 806. Makes a difference. Um, you get a conference call that's going to be starting at 5 o'clock. And if we just take a look at that again, what you're going to see AXP. Yeah, you're down three bucks. So at three dollars, 
It's not the end of the world, as I say, but what you, what you are going to see is that, see, we were, we were going into 11.7 million shares today, and we did 5.8. You got over the high of 102.96, which was generated on April 19th. You closed underneath it, then it gives it up. So the real kicker tomorrow on American Express is that do you come off that high and do you come off that high with volume? I think what the, the, the market is going to worry about, I suspect, folks, is that when you have the revenue drop inside the credit card business, particularly American Express, are the large banks eating their business now? You know, because when I think back, I remember the first time I got an American Express card 30 years ago, right? Huge deal, great deal. Um, at that particular point, it was only American Express and Diners Club that, Diners Club's not even around anymore, but they both had high limits, and both of them you paid off every month. They, they were really, they call them credit cards, but bottom line is that you, you had to pay them off every month. That changed over the course of years. What has happened with American Express is that J.P. Morgan has got into the credit card business in an incredible way. When you see these high volume cards, you know whether you know whether they're Marriott cards or airline cards or there's 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 a slew of them. The bottom line is that they are competing with an American Express in a huge way. What they're also doing. And this is where I suspect the cost structure, you know, inside that number, you can see the marketing and cost structure, what they're talking about for the amount of points. That's where I suspect they're getting hammered also, because I don't see a difference now between an American Express card or any other high value card. It just doesn't seem it. You know, bottom line, you know, American Express is American Express. Guess what? You get a high volume card from JP Morgan, a Bank of America. I don't, I, you know, I know JP Morgan has them. I, don't, I suspect the rest of them have them too. That's where their business gets hit. And what, you, what they're going to get hit in the future is that when you're going into a Chase Bank, you go into a Chase Bank, what do they say? Hey, you know, in a picture, if you're 20 or 30 years old now, you're going into a Chase Bank, which is on every corner, it seems like, in the country. You're going in there. They hook you up. What do they, they basically, you open an account. By the time you get home, a couple days later, you're getting another solicitation in the mail. Hey, we want to we want to kick you off. We want to get your credit going. You get the credit going. Guess what? The differential 30 years ago was that you didn't have high credit limits versus an American Express. Guess what? You have it in spades now. So I suspect they're gonna basically figure out a way to start growing outside of the aspect of their name only because I don't I think that name only is uh, basically you know pulling back pulling back in value let's put it that way we take a look at some of the high volume equities out here uh, today the Bank of America was up 12 Netflix down 435 um, CSX big let's go take a look CSX so the the rails that went topside um, oh, look at this. It's an ABC up. Okay, let's take a look here. So you break a B point, B point 67.66. You do it with volume. Okay, let's see what we got. Your A point here is uh, 58. It's a 10.8 A to B. So you get a uh, price projection of 72. We're almost there. We did 69. Let's see what's up above that. These are all time highs. So that's going to 72. United Airlines also come out with numbers. Let's see what they, they did today. They broke topside also. A uh, little, little bit different scenario, though. So they broke from where they came down on uh, January 26. They had gone south in one week from 78 to 65. Uh, that's going right after the 78. We're at 79 right now. Now, this is going to need a lot more juice because this also broke down July 21st from that same number, right from 80. Went from 80 to 71. You had 36 million shares traded. Next time down, we come down with 58 million. Right now, we have two more days. Uh, yeah, two more days left. You're at 24. But you can see even at that 24 number, we're not, we're not going to be doing those kind of numbers.
A um, little differential here. Let's see what they're taking in. What may help them is that the jet fuel um, looks to me like it's backing down. So, so they're doing about 10.8 billion a quarter, and they don't uh, they don't really expect that much more. It's been a fl it's been a flat market. They're not growing, but guess what? When they basically pull together United and Continental, they have they have quite a, a map as it is. We're going to take a look at the uh, XLE. So we had the oil numbers come out uh, earlier today. Uh, XLE finally got some juice underneath it. You know, this is uh, down from three months ago of uh, 79. You hit 73, rejected lower price. Looks like it's going to stay in this consolidation. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Aerobics Cube offers more than 100 million starting positions, resulting in 43 billion potential twists and turns. Yet this puzzle can be solved in 20 moves. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and knowing the right move makes all the difference in the world. And on Thursday, July 19th at 4.15 p.m., I'll share with you the three essential tools behind my number one ranking by Timer Digest for the S&P 500. This 30-minute event is being hosted by Ninja Trader, and it's open to everyone in our listening audience. At this event, I'll share with you the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that subscribers and I use to identify tops and bottoms, as well as Stevie's red line and the market profiles that I use. The sign-up link is on the homepage of TFNN.com and requires nothing more than your name and email address. To help celebrate my number one market timing ranking, we're making Mastering Probability available to anyone in our listening audience for the next 30 days with a free money-back guarantee, whether you've subscribed in the past or not. Make your move now by coming to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up for Thursday's workshop, as well as my free newsletter trial offer. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We had the Dow finish up 75, NASDAQ flat, S&P is up four. So if we go over to the uh, XLE, the energy sector, folks, what we had out here today, you know, the, the thing that's been amazing about the energy sector is this, is that we have... Oil that went from a price point of $42 two and a half years ago up to 75. Yet the XLE uh, trading at $75 still can't get traction. The bottom line is that the the high in the XLE is $101. Uh, when we look in right and right now, you're coming into the downdraft from the highs in oil 2014. Monster volume you're coming into, so the supply line is huge. 
If we go look, take a look at Exxon Mobil, what you're going to see, Exxon and Chevron, same type of setups. They just can't seem to get any traction. Uh, Exxon's trading at $82. Uh, bottom line, we've been in this consolidation. That, it's pretty amazing. We've been in the Exxon consolidation since 2007. Now, the high of that consolidation is 104. We're at 82. You know, what does happen, no doubt, if you own Exxon, I mean, listen, oil's never going to go away. You're getting a 4% dividend, but you don't get traction uh, principle-wise inside it. Chevron, same type of setup in Chevron. Let me pull Chevron up for a second. Okay, so Chevron's trading 121. We pull this back and take a look at it. And the differential with Chevron is very close to its highs. 135 is the high. Uh, that has had overtaking the 2007, 2008 highs. And, you know, dramatically so. We're about 30% higher than it. So you get Chevron actually has something going for it versus ExxonMobil. Chevron also is pushing out a 3.6% uh, dividend over the course of years. Um, my take, in the, okay, so now let's go just look at the oil contract itself. The oil contract itself, I'm going to bring this up on a continuous contract for a larger view. So if we take a look at the continuous contract, what you're going to see, I'm going to put it back 10 years. So you're going to see the highs that were established out here, 2014. Uh, in fact, we went from uh, 2011, April of 2011, oil hits $114. It stayed in that higher level to 2014. Crashes in 2014. Goes from a price point of $142, $107, rather, uh, down to $26. Oh, my God, 26. I forgot it was 26. I thought it was 42. 42 must have been the... I see. Yeah, 42 is the low established in 2008. 26 bucks. So where are we right now? Well, we were coming into the downdraft from 2014. Now, we bring this a little bit closer. What you're going to see is that last week we had the... So Wednesday at 4.30, the EIA numbers come out. The API numbers. Thursday... No, let's see, Thursday, no, Wednesday, <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday night, API comes out at uh, 4.30. Today, EIA numbers come out at 10.30 in the morning. Bottom line, as they come out, what ends up happening out here today, uh, well, actually, oil topped about two weeks ago at $75. Last week, when the numbers come out, we had a large drawdown, and you're talking about deviant. The oil market first went to 74, about 20 minutes. Then it basically went south and went south fast and furious, breaking into the $70 level. We hadn't had a move like that in about two and a half years. In fact, the last move like that was uh, February of 2018 uh, on a weekly basis. It went from 65 down to 58. Uh, bottom line, this is trying to make its way back into the $66 area. Now, if we get into that area, then we're going to be at 58. So that's here, the barrels of oil. Uh, if we get into gasoline, which each one, every one of us use every day, uh, bottom line is it's pretty good news. Uh, unleaded gas right now, 206, 204 gallon. The high was generated out here May 22nd. We're at 226. Uh, we bring this back a little bit further, and it seems what we're going to see out here And you got to remember, we're in driving season right now. We're in peak season. But peak season, guess what? We're J July 18th. Give it another 60 days. You, you basically are not peak season anymore. Um, the way this is set up, same type of setup. The differential being that in June of 2015, we, we had got a spike to $2.18. All is this gasoline contract did is went up and tested that. Couldn't handle it. That sets up saying that, okay, now we're going to have a shot for this to go back down to about a buck seventy. So I can, the oil and gas equities are basically projecting a probability that the actual physical oil wants to pull back. So we'll see where that sets up, but uh, there's no doubt that that'll uh, basically help our pocketbooks and help our pocketbooks in a huge way. Now, Let's go take a look at uh, some of the big dogs out here, because what we're going to have 
in the next week is a huge amount of the FANG stocks coming out with their numbers. And they're going to move that market, folks. Um, what we have out here, uh, Google, July 23rd is going to be a monster day. Google's coming out with numbers. Google right now is trading 1195. Uh, Google had a $5 billion fine. They can shake that off in about a second in the EU out here today. Uh, Google's laying right at highs. You know, the high that it that basically took out this week uh, was the 1186 high that was February uh, 18th. So that's going to be a big number to watch. Um, fundamental wise, what they're going to be looking for, Google's going to be looking for taking $25 billion. The amazing part about Google still is this Google's still growing by 18%. 18 percent. It's, it's just, it's phenomenal. It's, you know, five years ago, they took in 52 billion, 108 billion this year. So remember the 23rd, let's go to the big dog, Amazon. What do we have with Amazon? Amazon's on the 26th coming out. We know Amazon is Amazon. That's why they're called Amazon. Bottom line, that hits an all time high out here today. What Amazon's going to be looking for Amazon's gone from 89 billion five years ago to 237 billion today. This gets really bizarre. Amazon is growing their web business, meaning the web services, the cloud, by 55%. They're growing their sales internationally by 17%. They're growing North America by 27%. There's, these are just monster numbers. Um, and when you see the acceleration from 2017 to 2018, it's a, it's a huge number. Uh, 2017, they brought to the bottom line $4.55. They're looking to bring $12.49 to the bottom line this year, and they did it in the first quarter, meaning they hit their number. The number, but they were looking for a number of $2.50. They came in with $3.27. And <laughs> this is just something else. Okay, so that's going to be on the 23rd. Uh, Facebook. Let's see what Facebook, what Facebook is coming. Facebook is on the 25th. What Facebook is going to be looking for, that's trading 209. Facebook's going to be looking for 13 billion. And their business is off the wall too. Their, their business is even more intense. Their, their business over a three-year basis, they're, they're growing at 50%. Facebook went from 12.2 billion in 2014 to 56 billion. Monster, just a monster move. 877-927-6648. We had the Dow Industrials finish up 79. NASDAQ flat. S&P's up three and a half. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so we had a few uh, big companies come out with numbers. Uh, American Express is the one that's uh, getting hit out here, folks. American Express closed at a price point of $102.98. That's trading at $99.70. That's going to have a, looks like it's going to have a few problems because they did have a contraction of gross revenue. Uh, IBM, we take a look at uh, IBM, bottom line is that uh, IBM has been struggling for a long period of time. Uh, IBM closed at a price point of $144.52, that's trading up 50 cents. So uh, that doesn't get much traction. Uh, inside the gold market, what's going to get interesting is this, a G, uh, G uh, let's see, DG's uh, Detour Gold. Uh, we'd have a Detour Gold is this. You know, we've had gold go south since April 14th in a big way. Um, Detour Gold, John Paulson, you know, a fame of uh, making billions of dollars in the uh, crash. He turned around, got in the gold market uh, after the crash. Hasn't done much for him. Uh, bottom line, though, what you have out here today is this, is that he's a large owner of Detour Gold. The He went into the board a few weeks ago. Uh, the board had given a, told him today that they had a um, potential sale happening. What ends up happening? This was unsolicited, so Paulson came out with a press release to tell the public that there was a sale that was on the table. That took Detour Gold up $1.19. Now, it's going to be intriguing uh, is that Detour Gold literally just came out a minute ago and denied that uh, Paulson's report of a potential sale, they're, so they're denying it. This is going to be wild they, as to how this is going to shake out. Uh, we'll see where the whole thing does shake out. If, in fact, there is something on the table, what we're going to get out of that inside the metals market. It hasn't been a takeover in the metals market for a long period of time because, of course, it's gone one way south. Uh, T2 has a 21 PE. If, in fact, there's a number on the table, we're going to be able to see what is a large company willing to pay for that number. Wow. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows, and whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Everything you need is right inside you, folks. Have a blast with it. Look forward to speaking right back here, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.